talking about episode 1 of season 18 of Deadliest Catch. This season, there's going to be a couple new boats in this season. One captain is a returning captain, and he will be captaining a different boat that his family owns. And then, newest boat to this season of Deadliest Catch will be the Patricia Lee. And then, the captain that will be returning is Sean Dwyer, and he will be captaining the Eleanor J. This episode starts out with Sig Hansen, and he's in Norway, and he's talking about Alaskan crab fishery. All the captains are going to have to scramble to get quotas for golden crab, cod fishing, dungeness crab, and other species of crab. The golden crab fishery is a very rare fishery because it's not been profitable. Normally, golden crab would sell at about four fifty to $5.50 per pound, but now with the king crab fishery shut down, there's a lot more demand for other species of crab. Golden crab went from like $4.50 or $5.50 to $14.50 per pound. It's become a very profitable fishery now. And I think there's about, I think it's about a 1 million pound quota or something along that line. The two boats that will be going for Golden King Crab are the Cornelia Marie and the Time Bandit. Jake doesn't have any quota. He has one of the largest King Crab quotas in the fleet to catch, but he can't catch King Crab quota. He's talking with his majority owner of the saga. They are talking about a different fishery, a black cod fishery. Black cod is a really profitable fishery. And they know that Sean Dwyer has black cod quota, but he's also going to be fishing for Dungeness crab. So Jake calls Sean. They start giving each other a little bit of crap, but then Jake asks Sean if he'd be willing to lease him as Black Cod Boda, and Jake doesn't really have anything to offer, so Sean is kind of hesitant to give him the quota. Jake offers a pink slip for the saga if he doesn't catch the 500,000 pounds of Black Cod that Sean has. In monetary value, that's about $2.5 million, and that's about what the saga is worth as a boat. So, he's putting the saga on the line if he doesn't get the quota caught. Sig was in Seattle with the Hanson clan, and it was uh, Mandy and Clark. They were doing the gender reveal party for their daughter, Sailor. After that, family goes in and talks about what they're going to do to survive this shutdown of the king crab fishery. And Manny suggests, why don't we fish in Norway? Sig starts making calls and trying to make connections to get that going in Norway. Then it shows the... Time Bandit, the Saga, and the Cornelia Marie, they're heading out to the crab grounds to start their season. Then it shows Captain Keith in Seattle talking about the wizard going under a huge refit because last season they got their wheelhouse windows blown out, so they needed to do a huge remodel on the wizard. He's talking about that. Then it goes to the Northwestern, and Sig gets a call from a contact in Norway. This guy owns a boat, and it's not a crab boat, but I think it was like a Coast Guard vessel or something along that line in Norway. Owner of the boat is like, I need you to come, like, right now so we can start this. Sig's like, I'll be back for bear die season. He's gonna go and fish king crabs in Norway. Then it goes to the Summer Bay. And pretty much all the captains are at a memorial or crew members who've lost their lives at sea. They have all the captains and some of the crews of Deadliest Catch at this memorial to honor Todd, who was lost last season because he got injured from a pot on the Patricia Lee. And the captain of the Patricia Lee is Rip. He's there, and they're all honoring Todd. Landon Cheney giving a little speech about Todd and... Then it goes to the Patricia Lee, and Captain Rip is driving away from this little memorial for Todd, and he's talking about what happened to Todd, and so it was pretty emotional. Then it goes to the Cornelia Marie, and the Cornelia Marie is just getting out to the Golden King Crab grounds. They're going to be setting at about 250 fathoms of water, which is about 1,500 feet down, and that is the deepest that Casey and Josh have ever fished. Also, this season, Josh brought on another family member, 
And this family member is Josh and Jake's older brother, Shane. He's going to be fishing with them, and he's also going to be with them on Deadliest Catch Bloodline. Then it goes to the Patricia Lee, and the Patricia Lee is just getting out to the grounds, and they're going to be setting a 40-pot string in a line that'll be attached. It's long-lining crab fishing. It comes down to one of the last pots in a string, and that pot gets caught and almost takes out a crew, but luckily they get it out and into the Bering Sea to start fishing. Then it goes to the saga, and Jake has never done long-lining fishing, so he's starting to set the gear out, and it's the second pot they're setting out. Matt White, he didn't raise the pot launcher fast enough, got caught on this roller that's on the side to let the line go out without chafing it and ripping it, and the pot rips that off, so the crew has to fab up something really quickly for the rope to be guided so it won't get cut off. Then it goes to the Eleanor J, which is Sean Dwyer, and they're going to be dungeonous crab fishing just outside of Dutch Harbor. They're going to be really close to shore. They're about 200 yards or so from shore, and they start setting about 400 round traps for dungeonous crab fishing. Then it goes to the Time Bandit, and the Time Bandit is setting their gear in the golden crab grounds, and they're setting it in kind of like this mushroom area, and that's where they've heard there's good numbers of golden king crab. Then it goes to the Cornelia Marie, and they're still setting their gear in those grounds. Sig is just leaving Dutch Harbor for Norway, and Wild Bill's in the airport to go get the summer bay from Homer, Alaska. Sig and Wild Bill are talking for a little bit, and Sig's like, I'm heading to Norway to start king crab fishery there. So, Wild Bill's like, let me know how you do, and maybe I'll get there at some point. Then, it goes to the Eleanor J, and she's close to shore fishing for Dungeness Crab, and they start going through their gear. The first pot that comes up has about 19 Dungeness Crab in it. They're going for the second one, and then all of a sudden... All the lights and steering power shuts off, so the crew has to race to get that fixed because they're about 200 yards from shore. They could beach the Eleanor J, which would not be good. The crew goes down to the engine room to try and get it fixed, and they're looking all over the place. And then Sean is getting a little nervous about getting too close to shore, so he asks one of the crew members to drop the anchor to hold them in place so they won't move any farther. Zach, who's the engineer on the Eleanor J, he finds the problem and it's something cracked that shut down the engine. So luckily it's a minor fix and they get it done, get the power back on, and then they get back to fishing for Dungeness Crab. Then it goes back to the Patricia Lee. Patricia Lee starts going through their gear. They haul in the first pot and some really good numbers. So... They go to start hauling in the second pot, and the long line on that other pot, it breaks. So the Patricia Lee's going to have to go to the other end of the string to haul in their string of 40 pots. The waves are getting real nasty out there, because it's blowing about 45 knots, and the wind will get up to about 60 knots. Then it goes to Sig Hansen. He's in Norway, and he's checking out the boat he'll be fishing on, and the boat is called the Stallbug. And it's 193 feet long, which was some kind of Coast Guard vessel for Norway. It's going to be turned into a crab fishing boat. Sig is going through the boat with them, and they start making modifications to the boat to turn it into a crab boat. So they have about three or four days to do it. Then it goes back to the Eleanor J, and they are still fishing, and they're doing really well with the number of crab they're getting. Then it goes to the Saga, and the Saga starts pulling in their long lines for the black cod fishing. The first pot comes in, and it gets about 80 to 90 black cod, which is really good. And then the second pot they pull in has about 168 black cod. So Jake and the crew is really happy, and he's like, never count us out, because we'll get what we need caught, and I won't lose the Saga, because we're on such hot fishing. Then it goes back to the Patricia Lee and they are heading to the end of their string. It heads to the Cornelia Marie and the Time Bandit, and the Cornelia Marie lost about 10 crab pots. They had moved uh, not too far off of their area where they were, 
the buoys were sunk underwater, so they called Jonathan, and they came up with a plan to have lines attached to both boats and a giant hook to snag the crab pot lines. Because Jonathan had a theory that since the tides were ripping, it pulled them off where they'd set them. So they devise a plan, and the Cornelia Marie crew builds a, a giant hook to snag the pot. Jonathan has, like, a little rope launcher, so he launches that, and he gets the rope over to the Cornelia Marie, and then they get everything attached and ready to go. The first one, the Cornelia Marie and the Time Bandit got way too close to each other. Jonathan started pulling away from the Cornelia Marie, because if he didn't, they were going to hit. The first line snaps. So then they redo the process, get it ready, and start going. Each pot is set about two-tenths of a mile from each pot. They get all ten pots that are missing, and John, they get cuts the line off the Time Bandit, and the Cornelia Marie crew hauls in the ten buoys for their pots and get them attached to the rail so they can pull in the pots and go through them. After that, it shows the captains talking about this season of Deadliest Catch and them trying to save the fishery and... Then it shows some things that happen during the season of Deadliest Catch. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the bell icon down below so you can be notified when I upload videos. Also, please share this video with your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to smash the like button. Thank you guys for watching. And if you ain't dreaming, you ain't living. Don't forget to dream big.